If you want to work in quantum computing or in quantum engineering, do not get one of those quantum computing master's degrees that have been popping up all around the world or the United States in the last couple of years. And the reason why is because they don't really give you any sort of real tangible technical skill that's going to get you a job in the quantum computing industry. My name is Ari. I'm a quantum hardware engineer at IBM Quantum, and I work on scaling qubit control electronics so that we can actually build a quantum computer that's going to be useful for this world. And I help people build careers as quantum engineers because I know that if we're ever going to build a large scale and fault tolerant quantum computer, we need quantum engineers to help us do it. And I think doing a quantum computing master's degree is a major distraction because it doesn't actually give you the technical skills that you are going to need to compete with people in the industry. What they do is they focus on physics and they focus on theory. It's basically like a PhD light, right? And so the jobs that require physics and theory background those are most definitely going to get filled but the people with the phds because they're going to absolutely crush you in their experience and their knowledge just doing these basic quantum computing master's degrees do not give you the right foundation to succeed in these roles and let me prove it to you let me show you four different quantum computing master's degrees that are popular let me show you the curriculum and what you would actually be learning going through it so let's start with my alma mater. They have what's called the MSPQC, and I did not do this because I don't think this is a good idea. But let's just start looking at the requirements. Introduction to quantum computing, introduction to quantum mechanics, more quantum mechanics, solid state, more advanced quantum computing and quantum information. And I know what these classes are like. These are basically just like theoretical quantum information courses. Okay, let's go over to you, Chicago. Quantum mechanics, quantum engineering, whatever that means. I don't know what they would teach you. Hopefully it's practical. Quantum mechanics too. Again, why do you need to know quantum mechanics? If you are going to be working as a quantum engineer, yes, you need to know the basics of quantum mechanics, but why are you taking two semesters of quantum mechanics class? That's just extra physics and extra theory that you don't need to know and it's just distracting you. Okay, let's go, go to Cornell. And this one's a little bit better because they actually have what's called an engineering track. But if you dive deeper, Right Beyond these initial core requirements, which are quantum mechanics, simulation and computing, and uh, probably introduction to quantum information, which of these classes are actually practically useful? And the only two that I can really pick out is this computer architecture course or formal ver verification of system software course. If you wanted to be some sort of like um, control systems engineer, firmware engineer for control systems, or maybe something like uh, FPGA engineering, something like that then those classes would give you some sort of tangible skill in addition to the background in quantum computing. However, <laughs> very few of these courses are actually giving you a practical and tangible, tangible skill. Okay, so finally, UCLA. Again, computation, programming, algorithms, optics, theory of quantum devices. Yeah, okay, that's all very interesting stuff, but that's not the type of information that's going to get you the job unless you have some sort of additional practical and useful technical skill. Now, this is the only one that is at least slightly good because they require, I think, some sort of internship or they help you get an internship. So there's an internship here. And then it says students will either perform research in their group of a UCLA professor or through an improved, an improved internship at QST related company. That probably is supposed to say approved. But in any case, this at least is giving you some tangible quantum computing experience. But by and large, everything that you're learning is just a bunch of theory. OK, so in addition, all of these programs, they cost a lot of money. Let's look at the MSPQC, $48,000 total. For you, Chicago. It looks like it's dependent on the number of courses you're taking. So it looks like you take uh, three courses a semester. So you're paying $21,000 a semester for at least three semesters. $63,000. Let's go to Columbia. Tuition for master's programs. $36,000 per semester. And you are going for, it looks like, maybe three semesters. Yeah, three semesters. And I think UCLA is also around $50,000. Okay, so you're spending $50,000 for not even a guarantee that you are going to get a job in the quantum computing industry. 
They're just providing you with kind of this baseline understanding of quantum information and quantum physics, but they don't actually give you any sort of outcome guarantee. Now, what I find very interesting about the MSPQC is this is the only website that I really found that tries to substantiate the outcomes of the graduates. And it says it here, the third cohort graduated in August 2022 with a 100% job or doctoral program placement rate within six months of graduation. But here's where they're scamming you. This says job or doctoral program. It doesn't tell you what percentage got a job or what percentage got, a, got into a doctoral program. And so going into doctoral program from one of these master's degrees where the intention is to prepare you for industry is indeed a failure. That is a failure. You shouldn't be having to spend $50,000 and maybe an extra one or two years to then just to go into a PhD. You could have done that to begin with. And, and PhDs, most of the time, in the United States at least, if you're doing a PhD, they actually pay you to do the PhD. You get thirty or forty or fifty thousand dollars to do research, to take classes, to be a teaching assistant while you are a PhD student. You should never pay for a PhD, at least in STEM in the United States. So ultimately, this is not even a security to getting a job in quantum computing or quantum engineering. They don't provide a backup plan because if you get this master's degree in quantum computing, and then you cannot find a job, then you can either go back to the job that you were doing before or go back into the industry that you would have gone into before <laughs> with $50,000 less in your bank account, or you can bite the bullet, double down, and spend five or six years of your life doing a PhD. And that's what's so dangerous about these quantum computing master's degrees. But I understand why they're so enticing. They're very enticing because they give you the illusion that they are defining a career roadmap for you to follow to quantum computing. And that's their false promise. Pay me $50,000 and you will get a job in quantum computing. But that's not true. None of these programs are actually giving you real life employment statistics. They are just telling you, no, yeah, we're targeting towards industry or our, our students are placed in PhD or industry programs when most of them are just really going on to get PhDs. And so the reason why so many of you are thinking about doing these quantum computing master's programs is because you don't yet have a roadmap defined for your own personal success in your career and in your quantum engineering career. So I understand that defining this roadmap um, is very difficult, right? Defining your own personal career roadmap to become a quantum engineer based on your own life story, based on where you started, based on the country that you live in, is going to be very difficult. And that's why I make these YouTube videos because I want to help the people who ultimately were just like me who are struggling, you know, trying to define their path as a quantum engineer. But, you know, everyone's journey is definitely different and everyone starts in different places. So I understand if these videos are not addressing the specific detail about your personal struggle and your personal questions. And so that's why I'm launching something very exciting. I'm building basically a exclusive private working group for only the most dedicated people who aspire to be quantum engineers. And inside, I will personally help you develop your roadmap to becoming a quantum engineer in, unique, in a way that is unique to your story. It's not just gonna be like, just blanket follow these instructions. There will be instructions, right? But it'll be unique to your story. And this is exactly what I would have wished for when you know I was just trying to start out and build my career in quantum engineering. And so access is limited ultimately to only the most dedicated people. So take this first step right now in building your career as a quantum engineer and click that top link in the description. Okay, so I've proven to you that doing a quantum computing master's is not the right decision. So what should you do instead? Well, do a master's degree in electrical engineering, computer engineering, mechanical engineering, or computer science. And the reason why is you will gain depth in a practical, technical skill. And that's, remember, the most important thing. I showed these flow charts in my previous videos. Your technical skills are the most important thing in getting a job in quantum computing and quantum engineering. So you want to build depth in a tangible and useful technical skill. In addition, these programs will probably cost way less than $50,000, or they'll be completely free if you're a teaching assistant or a research assistant. A lot of grad school programs, even master's programs in the United States especially, will literally pay you money, or they will be free completely if you are a teaching assistant or a research assistant, assistant. Oftentimes, these quantum computing master's degrees, they do not allow you to be a teaching assistant or a research assistant. 
And so therefore you have to pay the full 50 or more, 50 to $90,000. Then finally, if you get this engineering master's degree, you will always have a fallback. You will guaranteed get a job paying at least $100,000 if you graduate with an actual engineering master's degree. You'll probably make at least 150K, but at least $100,000 if you cannot find a job in quantum computing. And I showed you, like, you, that's not the end of the world, right? You can get a job as an industry professional and then go back to one of my other videos where I lay out the roadmap is like, you can then start and continue to develop your skills in quantum computing if you cannot find a job right away out of your engineering master's degree. But if you wanna find a quantum computing job right away outside of your master's degree, you can optimize your engineering master's degree by picking a university that has a quantum program. So you could pick literally any one of these universities that offers a quantum computing master's and just do a normal engineering master's because then you can go and you can take all of these quantum physics and you can take the relevant quantum information or the relevant quantum engineering courses at this university while still developing a useful engineering skill that matches your interests. So this is the hack. It's you're basically gonna go to a university where you can take quantum courses and get involved with quantum research, but basically developing real practical technical skills. Right, so here's the flow chart that I've shown before. So you wanna dive deeper into a useful engineering skill that matches your interest. You wanna learn the basics of quantum computing. If you don't already know them, or you're not doing them on your own, well, you can take classes at that university because they offer quantum classes because you selected your university that had a quantum program. You can take those classes, okay? Then you wanna learn how to apply your technical skill to quantum computing. And then from there, get some sort of experience in quantum computing. So because again, you picked your university that has a quantum program, well, you can do research in a quantum lab there and you can use the connections that the university has to potentially help you get an internship. That's exactly what I did. I went to the University of Wisconsin. I was studying electrical engineering and computer engineering um, and for my bachelor's and my master's for that matter. Uh, I did research in a neutral atom quantum computing lab, basically focusing on kind of like control systems and infrastructure around quantum computing. And then I used that experience to then get my first internship at IBM. I got another internship at IBM and now I'm working full-time at IBM. And so this is exactly what I did that led me to a lot of success because I picked a technical engineering skill, electrical engineering, to keep diving deeper into. But then I, in addition, layered on all the important and relevant quantum skills. And so that's what this one is. Learn advanced knowledge relevant to your technical skill and quantum skills. Because basically, you just want to figure out what you like doing technically, and then figure out how to apply that to quantum computing. And then you can start picking the details that you want to learn more about. So for example, I was showing a job for a quantum error correction firmware engineer. So that's an interesting job because you also need to know about kind of the theory of quantum error correction. But you don't have to be an expert in theoretical quantum physics to be able to do that role. You have to be really good at firmware engineering, but then you have to learn the advanced quantum knowledge about quantum error correction. But that's very targeted, right? You wanna be very targeted and deliberate in your studies. And that's what this is. Doing a master's degree in engineering at a university that has a quantum program is the most targeted and efficient way to build a career in quantum computing and quantum engineering. Don't fall for the you know, pre-planned roadmap from these quantum computing masters that will not actually give you the skills. They will not give you the skills that you need to go get a job. Go back to one of my other videos where I talk about, I'm literally showing the job in the job description. We can go through the skills together and you'll see that these quantum computing master's degrees where you're taking these theoretical physics courses and this quantum information courses, they're not gonna help you get the job because those are not the skills that you need. So ultimately guys, if you're serious about building a career in quantum engineering, and if you made it this far in the video, you probably are very serious. Click the top link in the description right now to kickstart your career as a quantum engineer. Follow this framework. Instead of doing a quantum computing masters, if you're thinking about it, deeply rethink it, do some more research about the other universities and the other options out there for your master's degree. Click the top link in the description, do good work, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.